Hi, my name is Avery Smith, and in this video, I'll be reviewing Georgia Tech's Online Masters of Analytics. I'll tell you the good, the bad, and the mediocre, and I'll be as honest as I can possibly be and tell you the differences between the tracks, what classes I took, how I'd rate those classes, and life after the degree. But let me first disclose, I do run a data science project camp called Data Career Jumpstarts, and hence one could argue that I have conflicts of interest here. However, I'm going to put that aside and try to keep this as objective as I possibly can and give my honest feedback. I also wanna say that although I learned a lot in the program, I already had data science jobs before I started the degree. I worked as a data scientist at VaporSense as an undergrad and then moved on to ExxonMobil after graduating. If you wanna know my full data story, I have another YouTube video that I'll pop up on the screen right now and on the show notes as well. So why did I get a master's if I was already in data science? Well, I chose to get a master's less to transition into data, but more to cement myself and be seen as an expert, to land more senior jobs and to be a consultant and be an influential figure. So I already knew how to code in Python, I knew what machine learning was, and I had used it in real life business examples previously to starting the program. I just wanna make sure that you guys understand where I'm coming from so that you can make an accurate assessment of my review. So I started the degree in August of 2019 and finished in August of 2021. And I did it while I was working full time. The first four semesters I was working at ExxonMobil and I finished the last two semesters while I was running my consulting business, no data science, and education business, data career jumpstart. The program is 36 credit hours with each course being three credit hours, meaning you have to take a total of 12 classes. That means if you take two classes a semester, like I did, you end up taking six semesters total. And I did fall, spring, summer, fall, spring, summer. But you can really go as slow as you want at your own pace. If you want to go faster, you do need special permission though. The program consists of three tracks, the analytical tools, business analytics, and computational data analytics. But in the end, they only differ by two electives, so they really don't matter. The track isn't on your degree, so they don't really mean anything. They're just for fun. I guess, I don't know what they're for. The program is a joint effort by the IYSE, Industrial and System Engineering, MGT, Management, and CSE, Computer Science and Engineering Departments, and they each teach different classes and parts of the program. The Analytical Tools track is an extra two IYSE classes, the Business Analytics track is an extra two Management classes, and the Computational track is an extra two Computer Science classes. 15 hours of the degree, five classes, are core coursework, with the remaining 15 being electives. But keep in mind, you still need to satisfy certain requirements with those remaining 15. You just have a few extra choices between them. The remaining six credit hours are the practicum, which is like a semester long project or internship. They'll supply a project for you from companies like AT&T or other large companies. Or you can get permission to do it for your own company, or rather let me rephrase, the company that you work for. We'll come back to that in a minute, okay? We'll go ahead and hop into the pros now. Let's start with the best parts. Overall, I think the program is a pretty good bang for your buck, okay? One of the best parts about the program is the price point. The entire program costs around $13,000, and that's pretty great and rare. Other master's programs in the United States can cost double or triple that price, and it's from a brand name tech school, Georgia Institute of Technology, so that's pretty good, really. Other pros include the online learning format. Gosh, I love to be able to turn the tables on my professor and put them on 2x speed and go through that lecture so fast. I felt like I had the power. Also, it was awesome to be able to rewind and rewatch parts until I made sure I understood the concepts. To help with that, they also had a live transcription of the video, which made listening a little bit better because it showed you the words the professor was saying and you heard them, so that was pretty sweet. I also personally enjoyed being able to control my schedule and choose when I wanted to watch lectures. With work, family, and other obligations, it was really nice to have the flexibility in my schooling hours. So every week or every other week, you have a new module that contained a dozen or so video lectures and a pretty lengthy homework assignment. The videos are usually of a professor in front of a green screen talking through a PowerPoint. And it's actually pretty engaging and well formatted. Teachers read from a teleprompter and the videos are well scripted. It's important to think though, does this fit your learning style? Do you like that flexibility? Do you mind learning a little bit on your own? Are you okay using Google to learn? For me personally, I liked it and it worked really well. In addition to the modules, which are hosted inside of Canvas, the program has a pretty organized unofficial slash official Slack channel. It started unofficially and now is being somewhat adopted as official. And to be honest, it might be the best part of the program, to be honest. It was fun to meet my peers, ask them questions, meet other people going through the same journey that I was. And even alum are pretty active there. And they'll say things like, hey, my company is hiring, or hey, let me help you with this homework question. And yes, you heard me right. There is alums who are done with the program that will help you with your technical homework questions. 
and I am not one of those alums, so do not ask me for help, okay? Next, I do think the school places jobs pretty well. Big companies like AT&T and Accenture donated millions to the school and have their employees take the degree, and they hire pretty actively out of the program. Other alum are working for big tech companies like Amazon, Facebook, and Google, and I can honestly say Facebook and Amazon did reach out to me while I was in the program and after for a potential job, so there's a lot of good there. But let's get into the cons now and the stuff I didn't like as much. Remember, I have to be brutally honest for your own sake, right? So are you ready for this? I genuinely only really liked about half of my classes. The other half were pretty meh. I'll go into an in-depth class review later in this video, but I will say I did miss out on some of the program's coolest classes. And there's a couple reasons why that occurred, and some were my fault, and some were the program's. So first, I finished the program the last two semesters while I was starting up my own entrepreneur businesses. And I ended up taking some easier classes to manage the load of running a consulting firm, moving across the United States, and taking these classes. But at the same time, I was somewhat forced to take these easier classes as the harder classes filled up so fast. There was two semesters when I was unable to get into the classes I had hoped and planned to get into, because there's only so many seats and I just wasn't fast enough. Registration is one of those events where you can't be even a minute late or you'll miss your chance. A reason for this is the CSE classes, computer science, are the more interesting classes. And they're split seat wise with another degree the school offers, the Masters of Computer Science. And they have about 85% of the seats in those classes and so only a few are left over for analytics students like me and so I missed out. So there's only about 50% of the classes that were good and the good classes were hard to get into, so I don't know. I also felt the program didn't prepare me for a career as much as I would have liked it to. There was very little emphasis on soft skills, little emphasis on portfolios, little emphasis on interviewing and real life projects. In fact, I don't think I ever heard them say the word portfolio at all during the program. And there was surely nothing taught about it. And this was the biggest thing missing. As I was already in the field, it wasn't a huge deal, but it definitely felt missing. And that's why I've truly tried to emphasize those things in my own data science education course, Data Career Jumpstart. I try to center the entire learning platform around building a portfolio with real life projects. And also have an entire selection focusing on resumes, interviewing, LinkedIn, etc. Because at the end of the day, most of us only go to school to get a job and so we can make money. And if you don't focus on the outcome, then what's really the point, right? The other thing I was thinking about was I don't remember covering SQL at all, like ever. We covered Python and R for sure, but I don't remember writing any SQL queries at all my entire two years there. And that seems so bizarre, I think I have to be remembering incorrectly, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Another reason I was frustrated with the program is they advertise courses they don't actually teach. And yes, you heard me right, the list classes that don't even exist yet. They're planning on them existing in five years down the road, but you can't take them in your two years at the school. That feels like false advertising to me. Lastly, and I realize this is a little bit petty on my part, but I was mad about the practicum. You can get permission to do the practicum for the company you work for, pretty easily. So if I was still at ExxonMobil, I could have done the practicum with Exxon, which would have been pretty nice, right? Double dip a little bit, kill two birds with one stone, but nope. At the time of the practicum, I was running a small analytics firm, Snow Data Science, and I was told I could not do any project I was doing for my own business. I had paying clients with projects for me to do, but nope, those can't count as the practicum. So you can do a project for your employer, but not if you are your own employer, it's a no-go. Ugh, I, I know it probably makes sense, but I was juggling a lot of the time and just didn't feel fair. By the way, I did end up doing my practicum with the Utah Jazz after sending this awesome LinkedIn post to a lot of people and trying to get a lot of attention, and it ended up working out really just fine. And I had a lot of fun doing the practicum with the Utah Jazz, but, I was mad, okay? Okay, so now to the actual classes. I'll go ahead and list the classes I took and then go into more detail after. So my first semester, I took Regression Analysis, ISYE 6414, and Introduction to Analytics Modeling, ISYE 6501. Next semester, I took Introduction for Computing for Data Analytics, CSC 6040, and Simulation, ISYE 6644. Third semester, I took Data Analytics in Business, MGT 6203, and Computational Data Analysis, IYSE 6740. And fourth semester, I took Data, Visual Data and Visualization Analytics, CSC 6242, and Business Fundamentals for Analytics, MGT 8803. The fifth semester, I took Data Analysis for Continuous Improvement, MGT 8823, and Digital Marketing Management, 6311. Sixth semester, I did my practicum with Utah Jazz, and that was a lot of fun. For a total of 12 classes, really just 10 classes, and then the practicum counts 
for two of those classes. You have to take Introduction to Analytics Modeling and Introduction for Computing Data Analytics and Business Fundamentals for Analytics as your three core classes. But in fact, you actually have to get a B in two of those three classes to move on. The advanced required core classes are the Data and Visualization Analytics and Data Analytics in Business. After that, you need to take either simulation or an optimization class to fill your operations research credit. And then you have two statistical elective credits to fill, and then your two regular electives as well. Out of all of those classes, I'd rank the classes as the following. Are you ready? Introduction to Analytics Modeling, Data and Visual Analytics, Introduction for Computing for Data Analysis were all pretty good. I really liked those courses and they were a lot of fun, okay? So those four classes were great. Simulation and Computational Data Analytics, eh. Those two are meh. They were kind of average, mediocrity, what I'd expect, I guess. And the remaining five classes, I did not like at all. <laughs> the two required business classes are way too similar and way too basic. And my business electives that I ended up choosing, marketing and continuous improvement, were, well, business electives, okay? They were pretty dang easy. Simulation was good because of the professor, but I didn't find it practical at all. And for regression, I was not a fan of the professor and she actually made me not like regression really at all. So in conclusion, overall, if you're going to shill out 13 grand on learning data science, this is probably a great way to do it. They have some solid classes, a great network, a good brand name, and it's fairly affordable. Is it the only way to become a data scientist? No. Do you need to shill out 13 grand to become a data scientist? No, I don't think so. And that's why I try to offer a little bit cheaper through Data Career Jumpstart, uh, but you can do it in a lot of different ways, and I started my data career without even paying any money. But I hope you found this review helpful. If you're considering the program, feel free to ask any questions you want in the comments down below. If you want to know something more specific, I'll try to respond and answer that question. And if you did find this video helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button and smashing that subscribe button. And if you do do that, do do, sorry. I'll give you a shoot buck, okay? One shoot buck. I try to make free weekly data content on my YouTube and my podcast that helps level up your data career. So thank you so much again for watching and I hope to see you guys in future videos.